All right, changing the oil in your Polaris Ranger. That's this episode of Death by Bungie. Anybody watching Death by Bungie knows how important this Polaris Ranger is to this property, how much I use it for. Because of that, I like to do the maintenance on it twice a year, if at all possible. Don't always get it done, but I try to do it twice a year. This video will do three different sections of maintenance on this Ranger. The first thing we're going to do is change the front gear case oil, uh, change the fluid out of that. We're going to put a new filter on and change the oil in the engine as well. And then we're going to do the rear gear case, which is basically the transmission fluid. We're going to change that as well. There are three different types of fluid. I'll go through each one in this video. This Ranger is a 2011 model, the Ranger XP 800 EFI, I guess it says on the hood there. I don't know if there's a lot of differences between the models, but keep that in mind when you're watching this video. This is a 2011 Ranger. This is also the 4x4 model. If you have one of those ones with six wheels, that's going to have an extra gear case you're going to have to change. Don't have to worry about that on this model. The overall process might still be the same, I don't know, uh, but you'll be able to compare this as you're working on your Ranger. Hopefully it'll give you some tips and tricks there to do it. And you're also gonna see me complain about a few things, things that I don't like uh, about the design of this Ranger. In order to do this and do it properly, you're gonna need several things. I recommend you start with the oil change kit. Full synthetic four cycle engine oil 5W50 is what Polaris will sell you in that kit. It also comes with the appropriate filter. You are going to need a wrench to get that filter off. Make sure you have the right size wrench for your filters. And you also are going to need a set of tools, a set of the wrenches that actually go and take the bolts out as well. Polaris has kind of a unique set of bolts on uh, these things that you're going to have to be able to turn, and you need the tools to do that. The PS4, you're going to need two quarts. In a pinch, you can substitute some just ATV engine oil. I'm using 10W40 now because we're heading into the summer. In the fall, I would use a lighter weight if that's what you're going to do, if you're going to substitute. I don't think you go to jail if you don't use what Polaris recommends, but you're probably uh, violating your warranty or something. So stick with what Polaris recommends. You're going to need some demand drive fluid. It doesn't take much, but make sure you get some of that. That is the front end transmission fluid. One bottle of that will actually change the front end several times. In addition to that, when I'm changing the oil, I do put some of the oil stabilizer in there. I don't know that you need to, and I don't know that it's recommended, but uh, I use this stuff just because a buddy of mine works at an auto parts store. He recommends it. Um, I don't see where it hurts anything. I have it, so I just use this in the tractor. I use it in here as well. Now, for the rear end, for the main gear case, the main transmission, you're going to use the AGL Full Synthetic Gear Case Lubricant and Transmission Fluid. Get a couple quarts of that because by Polaris' own admission, it takes 34 ounces, and there's only 32 ounces in a quart, of course. You need to buy two of these just for an extra two ounces. What you can do is keep on hand an extra uh, bottle of this stuff, though. This is the Sinpower Full Synthetic 75 Weight 90. I think it's approximately the same thing. I wouldn't run only this. You can just put some of this in there to top it off as needed when you're making the changes. And when all else fails, get the book out. Got to have the instructions that came with your Ranger because it's going to deviate a little bit from what I'm telling you here probably. Make sure you have your book. I always mark those sections. In fact, this is really the only section I go through. I read the whole book, uh, but I stick with just that section. That's basically what does the important thing as far as I'm concerned. Go through that book. Make sure you read it. Uh, follow the instructions in the book. Have that handy as you're making those changes and you should be good to go. Uh, to get this process started, we're gonna start on the front end, so let's do that now. Okay, there are two plugs you gotta move on the front end. Front gear case, right in here, behind the driver's tire, front tire. I can't get the camera in there, let alone get both hands in there. Thank you, Polaris, very much. But you gotta take the drain plug out of the bottom, and you gotta take the fill plug out of the side. Fill plug's right through here. Drain plug, you can see it through the bottom. There's skid plates on the bottom of your Ranger, nice big holes. 
and you can put the wrench right up through the bottom of that hole. I use a two inch extension on my ratchet with the eight millimeter fitting, the eight millimeter wrench that I showed you before. The bottom one, you are gonna soak this ratchet and your hands with transmission fluid. So put a drain pan up front, uh, but you're gonna get covered with it. It's just the way it is, it all comes out at once. But that's no problem. Once you do that, let that drain out good. We'll put the bottom plug back in. There is a hole on the front of the Ranger, and that hole you can slide about a 12 inch extension off your ratchet through that hole with the little fitting on the end of it, and that way you can get in there and you can take that plug out right out of the front end. Once you get the plug out, we are gonna fill the side fill plug, that area, we're gonna fill that with this Demand Dry Plus. Now I've got a full one here, but I've got an older one here. This is like 10 bucks from Polaris, it's not too bad, but it doesn't take an awful lot, so I'll use up what I had from last time, and then top it off with the new stuff. To do that, um, on your Ranger, I recommend you put together a little contraption like this. This is not part of a meth lab or anything like that. <laughs> it kind of looks it though. But what this is, is a funnel, uh, just a regular household funnel. You can get one of these at your hardware store. Get one with a nice lip on it like this. That's very nice, very helpful. But you don't want the long skinny thing where you can just put a hose on it, get some transparent hose. Uh, I'd say it's about half inch hose or something like that, but something that fits over the end of that funnel. Get a nice length of it like this, and then you can insert that and sort of work it around the frame and get it into that fill opening. Also get transparent hose because that way you can see this fluid as it goes down and when it starts backing up into the hose, we know we filled it up. You're gonna fill it up and make sure it gets level full so that you can see it in there, see it in the threads. And once you can see that it's sort of level full up to the threads on that plug, you can put the plug back in and you're all done. One other thing about this, um, you're going to spill on the frame on that skid plate. So you're probably gonna to wanna to wash your Ranger again when you're done to get all that fluid transmission fluid off of there. Pull it out in the driveway, hose it off good, get the hose in there and clean that off. So I didn't mention that before. You kinda of wanna wash the Ranger before and after you change all these fluids. If you look under the Ranger, your skid plate has all kinds of holes in it. The ones you're looking at for the changing of the oil are this funky looking one that's shaped like a figure eight almost. And if you look up in there, that's a six millimeter. Heaven forbid Polaris use the same size every time. Six millimeter wrench you're gonna need for that one. So we're gonna do that. And you'll also see it doesn't quite line up with the hole. So what that means is when we take that plug out of there, some of the oil is gonna fall all over your hands and then fall into the drain pan. But most of it's gonna float on top of the skid plate and just clog up everything up there and collect dirt and everything else. Another reason why we're gonna power wash this when we are all done. After you have the oil drained out, put the drain plug back in. Make sure you include the washer that is supposed to go on there as well. Don't lose that washer. You gotta take the seat out. To do that, you're just gonna lift up here and you'll see that there's little holes right there where this little post right here drops down in there. That's how you get the seat off. You're gonna pop that up on both sides, this side and that side, and then you're gonna slide the seat out. There are little tabs right in here. Uh, see if I can show you one here. As you slide it out, you can see there's little tabs like these right here, and those tabs are just gonna slide it out and set that seat aside. We've got a little bin right here under the driver's seat. This is where I keep the manuals. I keep uh, my wrenches and stuff like that uh, that are Ranger specific. So we'll take that out of here. Once you've got that bin out of there, you have access to the undercarriage here where you can change the oil. If you look back in there, we can see your oil filter is right there. And that's how you're gonna access the oil filter. Up above that, we have the dipstick and that dipstick is also the fill tube you're to screw off the existing filter you can get a wrench for that at a local auto parts store once you get that filter off then you're gonna put the new filter on be sure to put a thin coat of oil around the little gasket on top of that filter before you screw it in place next step to fill it up we're gonna remove the dipstick right there take that right out of there and then we are going to use our funnel but without that clear tubing and we're just going to insert the funnel into the dipstick tube, which is actually the fill tube also. And there you go. We're going to fill that up. We're going to add two quarts.
the last part here, this back side, that's a real pain in the butt. Uh, it's very poorly designed. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. We're here on the passenger side. There's your gas cap. We're going to go right back in here. Again, here's the tire, the back tire. We're looking at the, the main gear case, okay, the main transmission here. And the plugs that we're looking for, are you ready? We're going down, and they're right there. You can see where they are. Top one is your fill and level checker. And the bottom one is our drain. And of course, when we drain it, it's going to run all over the skid plate. So we're going to have to hose this down, like I said, when we're done. But we'll drag the drain pan here first, get that drained out, and put that plug back in. Then we'll open up the fill. The fill is extremely hard. That drain plug, the bottom one, the shiny one right there, easy to get to. Just need a long extension, put it on there, and open it up. The top one there, the fill plug, that needs some acrobatics to open up. And I'll show you my little trick when we get to that point. It would be nice if you could reach that top one through that hole right there, but you can't. Um, so this piece of the frame right here is in the way of that plug. So to get to that, there's a little trick. I'll show you that in just a second. While that's draining, I'll show you our drain plug. You gotta clean that off good. I have cleaned it off with a rag. Gotta clean it off because it will be covered with filings. Nevertheless, that's an eight millimeter, by the way, and you need an eight millimeter wrench to get that out of there, and you should be good to go. All right, now you can see, I got the drain plug back in there, and I have drained it well. And I put the eight millimeter socket in there, okay, that little wrench that uh, you buy for this type of job. Now, like I said, this is in the way, this guy, so we can't do it that way. Unfortunately, this will not work, one of these little knuckles. Um, it just is, it makes it too long and it won't fit in there. So how are we going to do it? What we're going to do, we are going to take our, uh, about a 12 inch extension, okay? But we're not going to insert it. We're just going to put it in at an angle and just turn it gently. That end of it is not fully inserted. It's just enough to get enough to, uh, take on there so that it'll be able to turn it. I'll pull this ratchet off of here and do it with my hand. I've inserted our handy dandy hose with a funnel hook to it. And I am gonna go through and fill this stuff up. We'll be able to watch it go down this tube and we'll know when it's full because it will stop going down the tube. And for what it's worth, this is how I store it. I just sort of tuck it in between two boards and it just drips everything out. And there's hardly anything left in it, of course, because it's been but it's been used and those fluids will drip down. It'll be nice and clean for next time. All right, after that, we just got to put her all back together and we're good to go. The next step is I got to give this thing a bath. I think every ranger deserves a bath once or twice a year. Just keep dirt off of it. Keep the mud from accumulating on the frame and gathering up all that dirt and holding the moisture and all that stuff and rotting your frame out. Uh, just a good idea to wash them. Also, I'm going to go through and power wash it really good to get rid of all that uh, oil and the fluids and stuff that have built up on that skid plate. I don't want that stuff dripping out in the woods either. That's the next step. So we'll get that uh, power washing done. And then we should be all set and ready to finish up the food plots here this spring. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Death by Bungie. Make sure you subscribe. Check out our Facebook page for more stuff on there. And until next time, all hail Bungie! Bungie.